Hey, what's up, guys? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I guess so much for uh, taking a little bit of a break, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, I just can't help myself. You know, when there's something good that needs to be talked about, uh, then I will be there for you guys. Monday Market Report. Uh, this is for the week ending December 26, 2021. Uh, it looks like this might be the last one of the year. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, next one will be next Monday. I guess, uh, January 3rd, we're going to kick off 2022 uh, with a Monday market report, one of my faves, year in, year out, been doing this for quite a while, uh, but it is certainly my pleasure to talk about some of the most relevant post-1900 um, modern coins to have sold in the secondary market, uh, primarily graded examples is what we're looking at. Uh, I kind of like to use this, uh, and as you guys have seen throughout the last, what, three, four years since I've done the MMR, is that the Monday Market Report and its contents has really kind of helped shape where the market is, you know, as a whole. Um, I would say if the modern coin market, uh, as indicated in this video, is healthy and it's performing really well, then it's probably going to have a lot of trickle-down effects to all the other various U.S. coin types. Uh, going back into the 19th century, some of those earlier federal age of coins, colonials, um, and I would even venture to guess anything like in gold and, you know, uh, PMs and all that stuff. Um, so it certainly, you know, kind of has uh, a, a trickle effect on all that. Uh, but yeah, this week I thought it would be a little bit quiet uh, because knowing the um, the auction houses, uh, they like to kind of keep it a little bit light for that week. Um, as you guys know, everybody's on vacation. Everybody's enjoying the holidays. You know, uh, ha having a um, an auction saddled between Christmas and New Year's can be a little bit risky. Um, but believe it or not, great collections who we're using uh, to kind of model the market after this week I put out some pretty good stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm not joshing you at all. I think that they didn't need to do this. They could have waited until after the first of the year, but I didn't see the market, um, cough or hiccup one bit on, uh, on Sunday night, which is good. That's good news. And, and with all the sports venues and stuff going on on TV, um, parades and whatnot, I, I mean, you would figure, yeah, they're going to take, take some time off. Customarily, we've seen that in the past. So uh, it, it was a little surprising that they would highlight some pretty big coins. Now, a lot of what you're about to see in this video, I would say most of it, 95% of the content is going to be geared toward that registry set um, kind of practice. Uh, people, you know, just buying up the finest graded coins to add to their own registry, whether it's through PCGS or NGC, uh, there is a couple of very dedicated registry sets and then you can pick whatever series you want to aim for. But the idea is, is that you're obtaining some of the finest graded coins. They all go into a registry for that particular series and it's a points-based system. So at the end of the year, the highest point values of the top like two or three or whatever um, you know, it's more bragging rights than anything else, but you know, you do get an award, you know, you, uh, you, you get some, uh, grading vouchers, uh, for future submissions, things like that. As of right now, no big monetary prize, but, uh, you know, that might change in the future. Uh, all in all, it's a really cool thing to be a part of, but at the same time, when you're getting into some of the ultra modern coins, like from the sixties and all the way up to the modern dates, um, that's where it gets a little bit kind of risky putting all your money into seeing as how that, you know, if it's a pop one or a pop two, very exclusive, you know, once a pop three or, or that third or fourth or fifth example, you know, gets graded, then that's going to affect the values of all the other subsequent coins. And that's why I say it's not coins that you should personally invest in or add into your collection just to have either all in on a registry set or you're not all right so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the number of coins this week we got 18 uh, a little bit heavier than i thought it would be for a holiday weekend um but how about this one this is definitely registry set material here we have a 1957 lincoln wheat cent this one grades out ngc mid state 67 red 
Now, if you're going to be a part of the NGC registry, oftentimes those participants will want to assemble nothing but NGC graded coins. And I think probably this week compared to any other week of the MMR, where we've seen a heavy concentration of NGC graded coins, uh, which is a little unusual. Usually it's the other way around. We're seeing more PCGS than NGC. Uh, ratio wise this week it's it's flipped the script has been flipped a little bit but yeah this is a coin right here in incredibly common as a mid state bu specimen all right they, there are rolls of 57 still out there you could pick them up for around 20 to 30 bucks a pop um, you go through them you kind of cherry pick the nicest ones and then you send them off to the graders in the hopes that it will pop at a 67 which is the grade you want to be on a lot of these earlier wheat scents, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's either 67 or bust. There's no safety net for a lot of these coins. And that's that's why I say it's very risky to even, even consider grading any of these coins. Because if it comes back anything lower than the best, um, you're either going to wash or you're going to lose money. So you really don't want to do that. And another thing to keep in mind when you submit coins like this you don't send just one coin you got to send multiples um you know the, the idea is uh, you got to pay to play um the, the more bullets you fire out there you know you're bound to hit something so um definitely not a one and done affair you know you have to really uh put your faith into your grading ability make sure you're choosing the right coins that are clean the fields are nice and matty matte finishy I don't know. <laughs> I think I just made that up. It didn't even sound that good. But uh, you guys get the big idea. This one ended up selling for $1,665. Uh, I would venture to guess a PCGS um, comparable grade will probably end up being like a $2,500 coin from what we've seen in the past. Uh, now this one here, this is a proof version of the previous coin that we just looked at so these are only found in proof sets but i will say this proof sets from 56 all the way up to 64 where you can find the 90 percent silver halves and quarters and so on and so forth uh, are still relatively affordable you could but pick them up for between 30 and 40 dollars in this market um, they have gone up quite substantially in the last three years uh this used to be a proof set that you could pick up all day long for under 25 bucks uh but you know given the um the investment nature of uh the physical assets that are out there um that has certainly kind of skewed things a little bit um but w what we do know about proof sets from this earlier time um is that there's not a whole lot of them out there where you could find true cameo frosting, uh, whether they're regular cameos or deep cameos. A lot of what you do find, about 99% of proof sets from this period, uh, usually are all mirrored out, okay? So the U.S. Mint really did not do a good job sandblasting those devices on the dies uh, where they're going to capture some really nice deep frosting. But if you did find one, that's that's actually a really nice score, okay? And um, oftentimes you'll have to assess whether or not it's worth sending to a graders or just really putting it into a set or a type set. Um, either way, you know, you have found a really fun coin and uh, some of them are quite valuable if they're really clean. This one right here is a Pru 69 Red Cameo. I mean, that's, that's as good as it gets, uh, short of a 70. Um, but you, the frost is just okay on this one, you know, and there is enough frost on the coin to give it just a regular cameo designation. Uh, this coin right here is sold for $1,182.38. Um, the one thing that I failed to mention, I say 50, or 56 to 64, these are what I consider to be the more affordable dates of 90% era proof sets. You get into like the early 50s, and those things are like a few hundred, three, four, five hundred dollars a set. You have to really be um, uh, interested in those proof set years um, because there's, again, not a lot of cameo frosted coins, even from the early 50s. Um, it's a lot more risky to buy into uh, when the quality of, quality of the coins in the original mint packaging isn't really up to snuff. More registry set fodder here for you. We have a 49S, and boy, this thing is a gauntlet. 
This is a Mid-State 67 Plus Full Red through PCGS, and it also has the distinction of being a CAC coin as well. Now, this is not a particularly difficult um, grade to come by on these, but since it is CAC stickered, that's kind of a different story. Uh, that, that adds a little bit of premium, but even with the CAC sticker, uh, this just shows you that, you know, that 49Ss and 48Ss are quite readily available in high mid-state grades. Uh, this one ended up selling for $1,012.50. So a non-CAC version will probably end up being about maybe six, $700. So a very, very available type of grade that you could pick up raw. And then, you know, unless it grades out at 68, um, you know, this is going to be your best bet. But that CAC sticker means a lot to these type of coins. And holy Batman, this is this is what I'm talking about. Now that 49S that you saw, if it graded anything like this one in a 68 red, that changes the game a little bit. Now what this one is missing surely makes up for based off of eye appeal. I mean, it's just a really nice red example. It's a 68 through PCGS. Um, I would only imagine that maybe a CAC sticker would really shoot this one into the stratosphere. But even a non-CAC sticker coin, this is the best of the best. This is what we all hope and strive to find and send out to a grading company in hopes that they'll hook you up. You know, um, It's not a foregone conclusion that even the cleanest coin is deserving of that. This one ended up selling for $18,168. At 75 cents, um, it gives me chills when I say that because this is a coin that undeniably is available in mid-state grades. There are rolls of these. Yeah, you'll have to pay like two, three hundred bucks for a BU roll of 41 uh, Ds. Um, but boy, if you were able to obtain a 68 and imagine if this thing had a CAC sticker on it, that would be a, over a $20,000 coin all day long. Um, and yeah, that's the kind of influence that the CAC company provides to these coins and here's a 36d this is actually the last lincoln set of the bunch for this weekend um again it was pretty light in terms of the amount of lincoln cents available for sale um it, they did kind of throttle back the amount of listings because it is a holiday weekend and uh um, the, the big worry is that there wasn't going to be nearly enough of the same usual folks that are bidding on these high graded coins. But here we have a 67 plus red. I would say that that's a walk in the park type of grade right there, right? No, no. <laughs> uh, it's also CAC certified as well. It's a beautiful red coin. Again, it's made for a registry set. This one ended up selling for $1,102.50. All right, we're on the nickels, and again, this is not a series for the faint at heart. Uh, you really have to show some sort of uh, restraint uh, about grading any of these, uh, because you just never know. When strike designation comes into play, you got to know your stuff. If you're looking at these without the aid of any sort of magnifier, or I would even say even a USB scope, if you're not using a tool, to really dig down deep in the Jefferson Nichols series, you're going to get roasted. This is a 67 full steps 63, right? I mean, they only made, what, 500 plus million 63s back in the day? I mean, it was a um, very common date. Even to this day, man, they're all over the place. Um, and, you know, sometimes you'll come across one that looks pretty good. However, this is a, uh, a true registry set piece along with any other date of Jefferson Nickel. This one brought home $4,674.38. Again, the full steps means the world on these coins. And that's really what you're trying to obtain. It's not as easy as it sounds. Um, these are definitely lottery shot odds type of coins. And again, not for the faint of heart. Uh, and a 57. Again, another tough date for full steps. This one managed to uh, pop at a 66 plus FS. Uh, again, another registry set piece and uh, one in which I believe is uh, missing from a lot of those high end registries. This one ended up selling for $1,188. 
and a 52s this one is impressive uh san francisco minted 50s nickels just don't really look that good this one however kind of buck bucks the trend a little bit uh it's about as hammered as what you're gonna get for a 52s this one is a 67 full stepper through pcgs it's got all the luster uh, which is not not commonly seen on 50s nickels at all. Um, but I'm glad to see this one l at least looks like that the U.S. Mint employees actually tried to do something with the dies uh, to where it gives it a really nice presentation. Uh, this one sold for $7,655.62. But do you guys see the potential within this series? I do. There's also a few dates within the 60s, like the 69S. That's always a uh, kind of like one and done type of date right there, where if you're able to find one in full steps, you, you made a fortune. Um, coins have sold for tens of thousands of dollars for a few key kind of dates for full steps. All right, so we have this 24D. Uh, I think it's a D, right? Yeah, it's a D. I mean, th this one has a really mushy reverse strike. Uh, the obverse isn't that good as well, but, uh, you know, this is a key right here, guys. If you're looking to obtain just a decent example, um, you might be settling for something like this. You know, mid state 63 is not, it's not a great grade. Um, I mean, furthermore, we're talking 1920s craftsmanship, which is just a crapshoot at times because it was the Great Depression age of coins. Uh, quality control was not good at all. Uh, so, you know, this is kind of the de facto of what you would expect from this particular decade. Now, this example right here is decent. You know, if you need it for a typeset and you, you're kind of aiming for like a full mint state typeset, um, I mean, this one would certainly fit the bill. You know, um, there are, I guess, worse coins that you could buy for the same amount of money. This one ended up selling for $1,125.66. Again, it's a key. The mint mark, yeah, is almost missing. Probably a little bit of uh, filled dye of grease and a bunch of other crap that was in there. But, you know, if you have to settle, this this one is decent. And when I saw this, I'm like, there's just no way that Great Collections actually put this one up on a Christmas weekend. But I'm glad it did, and it did not suffer at all. This is an NGC-graded AU58-16 double the die obverse i mean this thing is gorgeous i, I mean uh, this is uh an obvious kind of like high-end coin that we all strive to look for but is next to impossible because i would venture to guess that a lot of these have been cherry picked 30 40 years ago um but this one right here it's kind of hard to tell looking at it where exactly the wear is on there i probably the the, the high point of the braid maybe the cheek um, the reverse, I, I mean, uh, the one thing about this coin is that it overtoned to perfection. Uh, so, you know, I would venture to guess that even if this was a resubmit, a crack out and a resubmit, it might actually obtain like a mid-state 61, uh, which will kind of change the value of it a little bit. Uh, but man, you could, you could stare at this thing all day long. From the true doubling on the date, which, by the way, that that is what it is. Uh, the doubling on the feathers, that's kind of nice. Even take a look at good old Buffalo Man's chin right there. That thing is insane. Uh, just the amount of doubling all over the place. Uh, the little ribbon things that come off the braid. I, I mean, again, this this is a true work of art of, of uh, you know, modern post-1900 mastery. This one, uh, well, this is a brand new car right here. It sold for $37,127 at 25 cents um uh, again it, there it is that that's that's the one right there oh let's see do we have a few dimes i think we have two dimes okay how about 44 s uh, these are notorious for the absence of any sort of decent strike but here we go ngc mint state 68 full bands so it's got you know it's got one of the better strikes for a san francisco minted coin you just don't see that that often but this one uh looks good uh for sure and uh, this one ended up selling for $3,092.62. Uh, again, just another important coin to have. Uh, registry set owners will want this one. 
Um, but it would make even a great typepiece as long as you don't crack it out or anything. Um, this is going to be a coin that will continue to enhance in value over time. And then, of course, we got 31. Now, this one here is kind of on the list for a little bit different reason, okay? Um, this one is, is pretty nutty. Not for what you think, but this one is a PCGS graded Mint State 65 full bands. I mean, it's a good grade. Uh, I kind of like that middle type of just average grade for a Mint State Merc, all right? Um, and so, the grade is fine. I think it's on rate for what we have here. Uh, full bands, yeah, yeah, it, it looks all right. Um, but this uh, this thing was graded back in the day, um, and it has what they call a doily holder, which is simply just a design of the uh, the label in itself. It kind of has this weird doily pattern, kind of like what Grandma used to have on their table with a lamp on it or something. Um, but yeah, the, this, the doily holders are quite scarce these days. Apparently, it was a very short-lived type of label design, um, but even to this day, they're collectible for what they are. Um, considering that this is a Mercury Dime graded in a doily, and it's like one of the most popular U.S. type series around, that's what matters. But if you wanted to add icing to an already sweet-tasting cake, this one is, has a gold CAC sticker. It's really hard to obtain a gold CAC sticker on anything. Um, not, not these days, but just in general, even going back years. Uh, but this one right here, certainly a surprising one of the group, sold for $2,087.02. Uh, I mean, we're talking about like a five dollars $600 coin that ended up selling for 4X because of the gold CAC sticker and the doily, um, whatchamacallit, uh, label. Uh, so, you know, there are extra intangibles that put in extra value into a coin. Some of you are going to think that that's crazy. Like, you know, the value should really be in the coin and less about all the other stuff. Um, that really is not attached to the production of the coin. So I, I get it. But just to let you guys know, if you come across a doily stickered coin in a shop and they have it priced okay, then, you know, that might be something you want to pick up. Doily coins in general command about 3 to 4x of what the coin value is. All right, so this one I, I was keeping an eye on. I was hoping to throw in a few bids and try and win this one for like three, 400 bucks um, because it, it's one I need. Uh, but this is a 2020 West Point PCGS Mint State 67. Now, this one was uh, an early graded piece, and that's why it says early find on there. So I think that's through the first 30 days after the release of this coin. But, well, yeah, this was a big deal a couple years back. You know, the circulation rarity West points were the talk of the town. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that, you know, your best investment bet on these, aside from hoarding kind of like the mint state, graded coins when they first came out you just assembled rolls of them and held on to them congratulations by the way those are worth a ton of money but mid state 67 and all of the designs are extremely low pop coins and um, i wouldn't touch 65s or 66s although those will probably end up going up in value as well um, but 67s is kind of like the golden kind of rule to grading and uh, obtaining these coins. Um, grading these, I would say, I probably wouldn't do. I would just go and buy the graded examples that are out there. Uh, these continue to inch upwards, and I can imagine in 12 to 24 months, um, these are going to be hitting kind of like a completely different level of collectability. We shall see. I don't know. I've been buying them, and uh, they're just they're drying up. And this one... Yeah, three, four months ago, like if we were talking about this coin over the summer, it probably wouldn't even be on my list. However, this one ended up selling for $1,293.75. Again, the popularity on the West Point coins is uncharted. And I think these are going to age very well. They're low minted. And they were all circulated. These weren't sold in some U.S. mint set or anything like that where they're all in perfect shape. These things circulated. So any additional examples that come out of circulation are going to be beaters. So there you go. I said it for here first. They're going to be beaters. And you guys will agree. 
Okay, so we're getting into some pretty amazing quarters. And these, I I think and I believe that they were all consigned by, uh, or well, they were consigned to great collections, but they're all from the same individual. Uh, these were all um, older, kind of like soap bar style slab coins. Now, this one, not so much. This one's a little bit more recent. But we have a few very nice ones, and there's a whole bunch more I didn't talk about. So you guys can check out the website and take a look at some of those other quarters this is a 46D, and they're all known for their absolutely amazing original toning. Uh, this one is a mid-state 68. They didn't play around. This one this one got the bonus ball. Um, you know, they all did. They're all high-grade top-hop coins, and it's it, no reason. It's a big reason why that these are on the list. Uh, this one right here sold for $2,306.25. This one's the more pedestrian of the bunch, but... We also have a full set of 1945 Philly, Denver, and San Francisco minted coins, all graded 68 through NGC, that did sell also this weekend. This one right here, again, they're all toned too. It's all pretty. You could kind of make the, make your judgment on which one's your favorite. I know which one is my favorite. You'll see that here momentarily. But how about a 68 star? Beautiful coin. Very. If you like lighter toning, uh, that's pastel -y. This one is for you. Uh, this one ended up selling for $11,812.50. Uh, beautiful coin. And, uh, you know, again, it's registry set stuff. All right. Again, I wouldn't invest in any of these. Here's a 45D. So this is the Denver version of this date. And, uh, again, the toning is there on both sides of the coin. These were... Um, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily album toners uh, because they're all over the place, but these were probably in some, uh, some you know, I would say, I don't, I'm not even going to say they were in like a little drawer. Uh, they could have been in maybe some of the older non-archival, uh, like non-acid-free envelopes and stuff like that. That's where you could find stuff like this. Uh, but this one is also 68, but note the, um, the the label design. This was an actual soap bar. These don't have the prongs. So this was this one was probably graded 10, 15 years ago. Uh, it's just a pure guess. This one sold for $10,406.25. Now, Denver's and San Francisco's are tough, all right? So that's why they have five-figure price tags. Compared to this beast right here, uh, this one has all sorts of color on the obverse. Again, it's a work of art. Someone had made mention, well, if the coins are already graded at a specific number, so how do they command more money above and beyond what the actual market value is on them? Well, there's the uh, unknown kind of artistic side of it, and that's really the toning. The toning adds uh, just a huge amount more premium on graded coins, even though they already have a, a number to them. Um, and that's something, again, that's at the discretion of the bidders and collectors alike of what they decide the up premium is for these type of coins. Now, this was my favorite, obviously. Um, they, I've always been a fan of toners. And if you guys don't think that there's a market for toners or it's some sort of sham, take it from a guy that spent a lot more money on just basic coins because of the toning, because there's a get to a point in time where these things are going to dry up in the marketplace uh, through attrition. There's going to be collectors that don't like toning that will dip these and completely ruin the value on them. I mean, yeah, there's quite a few of those. I've had people just jokingly say, or maybe it's not a joke, have made mention that, yeah, I would dip that thing all day long. I'm like, okay, so you'll trade in a Coin that's worth, in this case, this one here is sold for $5,684.62 and turn it into a $25 coin. I don't know. If you don't like it, sell it, reap the rewards, and then buy something you do like. You know, buy some gold, buy some guns and ammo, you know, because a lot of the people that, that really, really want to take advantage of this, they'll flip it and turn it into something that's more meaningful to them. I mean, do that, all right? Don't dip the things. For crying out loud, it took many decades to get to this point in a coin's uh, artistic, you know, life span or whatever. Uh, but yeah, don't throw away fifty five hundred dollars because of your own personal preference. Obviously, if you hate money, then you'll do that anyways.
That's my point of view on that. And then finally, we're going to end it off on the 36. A uh, very common date. I mean, we're, I didn't throw up like a Denver or San Francisco. There was a 32S that sold for a lot of money as well. I wanted to kind of highlight just basic, ordinary, kind of like high mintage coins um, that, that show a lot of potential. Like this one here, 36. It's got some very deep toning on both sides of the coin. Got that 68 star again through NGC. I mean, the star is a designation for eye appeal, and that has everything to do with the toning. Um, but yeah, this is a good way to kind of end off 2021 in the tune of $15,220.12. is an absolute chef's kiss of a coin to wrap up the Monday Market Report for 2021. Well, guys... Would love to hear your thoughts. What was your favorite coin of this week? Yeah, this one was a little bit longer than usual, but there was a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of reasons why this and that and those. I'm your host, Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Thank you again for all your views and support in 2021. I love you guys. Uh, to the moon and back, uh, you guys uh, are what made this channel. I, I wouldn't exist if it wasn't for viewers like you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. You know, the usual drill. Uh, Coinaholics, we're discovering together into 2022. Join me in our quest to find out more really neat stuff. You guys take care. Happy New Year. And I'll see you soon. So long.